Hey guys, my name is Batimio, and today I wanted to take a closer look at the M2 Slam from Battlefield 4. I recently made a video where I outlined some of the differences between this nifty little gadget and the anti-tank mine, but I mainly just kind of focused on the, the damages of the two gadgets, and I didn't really look any deeper than that. And so for today, I, I wanted to remedy that. I wanted to look uh, further into the M2 Slam, kind of unmasking its mysteries, and really showing the, the true potential potential of this explosive device because I don't think many people out there uh, understand or realize what you can do with it. And so first up, we need to know how the M2 Slam works. And right now, a lot of people just use it as a, an anti-tank mine, and that's, that's fine. It does that very well, but it also has some very unique properties. One of them is that it can stick to surfaces, them be them enemy vehicles, be them a wall, but where things get interesting is that it also will act activate and explode when a vehicle passes by. And so essentially what you can do is use this as a anti-tank wall claymore. So instead of just placing it down on the ground like a normal boring anti-tank mine, you can place this on a building, you can place this on a car door or something like that where you know there's gonna be a lot of vehicle traffic and then when the vehicle passes by, it explodes, you get a nifty kill. And what's nice about this is that if you put it in the right spot, the enemy tank will have absolutely no idea that there is an explosive device there. You guys know that one of the weaknesses of the normal anti-tank mines is that you kind of have to place them out in the open. And if you are against a tank driver that knows what they're doing, they're going to be looking for those mines on the ground and they're either going to spot them or they're just going to see them normally and either avoid them completely or explode them with their main shell. But if you're able to be kind of sneaky with the M2 Slam, you can place these in a location where they literally will not be able to know it's there until it's too late. And here's a really good example of it. I'm playing on Lang Kang Dam. I'm running on over to this little car that's kind of sideways. And since I know that the enemy team is coming from the opposite direction, direction, I put it on the side where they don't have visibility to it, at least from their angle, and now when a tank rolls by, he has no idea it's there until it's too late, and then I get that nice explosive kill. And I would not have been able to do that with an anti-tank mine, and more importantly, if the, if the tank driver was a good one, where they would just normally blow it up. Uh, one downside, though, is that you do need to be fairly close to the explosive device for it to detonate and do full damage. Uh, I tested it out a bunch, and it seemed to be that the sweet spot was about four to five meters, and anything further than that, the slam would explode, but it wouldn't do any damage. I don't know why you would design a mine to explode, but not do any damage, or you would be past its range, but that's just how it works. And so it can kind of be a risk reward type of system where it can really catch tanks by surprise, or it can just go off and, and not do any damage if they kind of skirt around it a little bit. So that is a downside. Uh, but probably my favorite functionality of the M2 Slam is its capability of taking out attack boats on Carousel Storm. I don't think many people realize this is even an option at this point, but basically what you do is that you can toss these into the shallow sections of the map, usually those inlets that are going into the center of the map or, uh, you know, to that nice bay area, either by just kind of wading out into the water a little bit and then tossing them into the center or by tossing them over the bridge. The bridges are usually a really good spot. And then when an attack boat rolls on in, th the mines themselves don't actually float, so it needs to be a, a shallow section. So I I don't think you can do this like in in like a a deep section of the map but as long as the section is not five meters deep it's going to act as a normal wall mine it's going to activate and it's going to blow up into a nice little fireball and i can't tell you how many times i've been able to get kills like this because i don't think people just realize that this is even an option like no one right now is looking for slams in the water like no one and so you'll see many people just continuously go over these mines over over and over all match and you just you just rake in the kills it's it's awesome uh, another nice feature is that this can also act as an improvised C4 device. You can run up to a tank, as you would with C4, place them on there, and then instead of having to detonate it like you would with C4, 
you just kind of walk away. As long as you have three of them on the tank, once the tank accelerates, they're gonna detonate, it's going to explode, there's gonna be fireworks everywhere, it's, it's, it's great. The thing is, is that they do need to accelerate for them to go off. So if they're just sitting there, it's not gonna do anything. Uh, I know that some people were kind of speculating that it may be on some sort of timer or something like that, but no, it, it truly is based off uh, off of movement. And, and hopefully this right now, what you guys are seeing is a great demonstration. I found an AA that was just way out in the boonies. I placed three of the slams on him and then I, I waited a good while. I kind of twiddled my thumbs a little bit, but nothing happened. And so I decided to just kind of ram on into him to try to get him to move and then eventually he realized I was there, he started to move up a little bit, and that's when things detonated. So you do need to keep that in mind. Uh, but what's honestly kind of awesome about this is that you don't actually have to manually activate the slams. You guys know that one of the downsides of using C4 is that once you place them onto a vehicle, you have to manually activate it, and in that gap from once you placed it to once you want to kind of run away to detonate, there's a lot of opportunities for an infantry to take you out, the tank can kind of realize that you're there, swing his main cannon over, snipe you, the gunner can take you out. There's a lot of opportunities for you to die, and if you're not able to press the button in time, uh, the tank is gonna live, but uh, that's not the case with the slam. Like, as long as you're able to get three of them on there, you've basically sealed the fate of that tank. I don't know if there's any way right now for you to take off an enemy slam from your vehicle, so yeah, basically if you put three of them on there, once they accelerate, they're gonna explode and there's no way they're coming back from that. Uh, the final feature that I'm gonna talk about today is a little dirty, like it is dirty. And the way it works is that you can place the slam on to unoccupied vehicles. And so if you were kind of behind enemy lines, you were trying to bat cap some of their points and you see there, there are jeeps along the way that you know that an enemy will eventually kind of spawn on into, instead of taking the jeep for yourself or that enemy vehicle, you can place the slams on them and since they don't disappear when you die, Eventually, an enemy is gonna spawn on into it, and then once it accelerates, which is exactly what people are going to do, you're gonna get the kill. I know, I know, it is dirty, and I don't know how much I advocate people actually doing this, but it is just another feature that uh, you can take advantage of with the slam. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is it for today's guide of the M2 Slam. I hope you enjoyed and more importantly, learned a couple of things and so that you can now take advantage of this amazing gadget on the battlefield. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.